It's no secret that on this channel, we believe that freeze-dried food is the ultimate currency of the apocalypse. Some people even say we talk about it too much. But the reason why we do is because it's the single most important preparedness item that you can store. If you don't know what freeze drying is and why it's the most overlooked invention of the 20th century, you can watch our videos about it here, or 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 here. But here's a word of caution. There's a right way and a wrong way to rehydrate your food. It's not like in the movie Back to the Future 2 where they put the mini pizza in the rehydration machine and it comes out perfect. Today we're going to share with you some secret tips on how you can properly rehydrate your food so that you don't end up with something that's a dilapidated, soggy mess and is just the perfect texture. Hi folks, Canadian Prepper. Today we are back with Steve Cyros, owner of Freeze Dry Wholesale, the guy who's filling up the government bunkers and all the elites and even your pantries with this freeze dry goodness. Today we're gonna to talk about the science and the chemistry yep. of freeze dry. Now this video is perhaps gonna be a little bit more advanced. We do some introductory videos where we talk about what freeze drying is. But this video we're gonna talk a bit more in detail about how exactly it works, and more importantly, how you can rehydrate the stuff that you get. Yeah. Because there's almost a science and an art form to that in itself, right? I'd call it an art form. I mean, it's pretty hard to mess it up, but there's, there's ways to do it right and ways to do it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. There's things that are easy to rehydrate, like right. chicken, right. just pour hot water on it, yep. or any water. Yep. And then there's things that are a bit more challenging, right? Because Different textures. The coating on a chicken nugget is an example. Easy to rehydrate, tough to get that crunch uh, with, with um, out getting too soggy. So for that, we're gonna be experimenting with rehydration <laughs> and then we're gonna toast it afterwards. So it's an intimidating process and even us talking about it is probably scaring a lot of people. It, 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 you don't need to really overthink it. Basically, freeze drying is the process of removing the moisture from, from the product. All you're doing is adding the moisture back in. There's no wrong way but there are some ways you can enhance it greatly, if that makes sense. But there are foods that if you don't do it right, like I did a Belgian waffle that was 20 years old and it just got soggy because I didn't do it properly. So there are five general ways that you can rehydrate your food. You can steam it, you can use cold water, you can use hot water, you can use the napkin method, you can use the plastic bag method, or you can just eat it dry, but make sure you have a large cup of water handy. You, you want to consider the fat content, which will help you decide which method you use because those fat molecules can inhibit the water uptake. Chicken breast is relatively low in fat, but those cell walls will close, especially if, uh, if we're talking 20 years from now, that food's been in a freeze-dried state for a couple of decades. It, it might take a little bit longer, not necessarily because of the fat. So a cold water bath will work well. You might want to give it two hours, 20 years from now. The food will determine the method. Anything that's breaded, pancakes, waffles, anything that can get soggy will probably get soggy if you liquefy it. Yep. For something like freeze-dried slice of pizza, if you want to approximate that texture, you're pretty much going to have to steam it. If you soak it in water, you might get soggy bread. Yep. Something like this, like a classic pound cake, you probably want to steam that as well. You would. That's a yeah. thick, you know, it's an inch thick slice. Uh, yeah. So it'll take some time to penetrate. I'm going to put this in the steamer and we're going to see what happens. What we have here is we have some paper towel or you can use a cloth or an old dirty t-shirt if you want that, Sock or, that, yeah, uh, whatever. that deep southern flavoring. You can use a Ziploc bag, but you don't have to, but this you might speed to. up the process, keep the moisture in, or you can use saran wrap. Tin foil or a piece of Tupperware or something, just to trap that moisture. All you're really doing is you're taking a, you know, you can see how hard that is. Yeah. Um, just, do you wet the napkin first? Or? I usually just run it. All you want to do is run it under the sink, get rid of any excess, shake it out, and what you're left with is just basically a dry piece of food and a wet paper towel, and then this will literally, in a matter of a couple hours, reabsorb slowly that moisture, and it'll go back to that normal texture. So that okay. napkin has a way of controlling how much liquid is going into it. Yep, and there's no reason why you couldn't do that with chicken breast. It will, it's just a slower, gentler method. Uh, you could do that with a piece of steak or roast beef as well. 
slow dehydrate to let it slowly kind of get it'll make a big difference yeah again there's no right way there's no wrong way but this definitely will have a better end result for you so yesterday we put a bunch of stuff in ziploc bags i did a couple of the uncooked meats and a couple of the cooked meats i did pork chops you typically won't want to use a boiling water on an uncooked pork chop because it'll just it'll poach it It'll cook it very quickly. You can do that on the fly, but the right way to do that would be a little bit of cold water in a sealed Ziploc bag, and you have access to refrigeration, let it sit for a while. If you really want to get creative, you get your Ziploc bag, you put some marinade in there, you put your freeze-dried piece of meat, you let that sit in there overnight, and it's gonna be able to achieve a level of infusion of the flavor that you're never gonna be able to achieve with just a piece of meat that's not freeze-dried. Flavor will blow you away. Yeah, and I can tell you that there is a noticeable difference. So I'm just gonna pull one of these out and we can see the texture difference. That was an uncooked pork chop that was a piece of styrofoam texture-wise, but now it's basically a fresh pork chop that you bought at your butcher shop. Toss it on the grill, throw it in a sear pan, and go to town. Okay, so I'm trying to pull this apart, right? And you can't pull it, but let's yeah. uh, compare that to Styrofoam. That, right? Yeah. So that's before, and this is after, right? So it's, it's incredible the difference just that water makes. So let's check out the, this is the roast beef. This is roast beef, fully cooked. So this one is fully cooked, and you can see that. Beautiful texture. So here we got some meatballs. That's a fully cooked uh, Italian style meatball. Yeah. Then we did those. So we just, you just put water in the bag. That was just very simple. Toss six of them in a bag, a squirt of water from the sink, and threw them in the fridge. So you don't really need napkins for most no, of this stuff? No. If you noticed when you were wringing that uh, pork chop out, it was shedding water, it was dripping. It, it will only absorb back the amount of water that we took out. You can't over rehydrate it. In between the cells, you can actually have more water. So you, wanna, you would want to ideally let that sit before you tossed it on a grill. And last but not least, we have some freeze-dried cod loins. Cod loins, yeah. Don't know if I want to open this because we're in the office. Huh. And that would be, uh, that's a sin I hear. Fish rehydrates really, really well, I find, because... That probably was a, what, maybe 60 seconds it took. Yeah, really nice texture there on the cod. Freeze-dried roast beef, you can do the napkin method for this as well. You can also immerse that in cold water. Now it's fully cooked, so you could actually use boiling water and probably eat that in three or four minutes. But cold water in the fridge uh, for a couple hours and it's gonna be perfect. Just like, yeah. just like it was before we freeze-dried it. And then anything like this that's granular, that has limited surface area, I should say, yep. really easy to rehydrate. All right, so here we have some freeze-dried Canadian bacon. What is Canadian bacon? Uh, is it bacon or it's, is it it's ham? Basic, yes, that's the age-old question. I mean, I think it's ham with a fancy name, but they should absorb pretty quick, especially boiling water like this. Hear it? Hear it? Yeah. Bubbling. See the bubbles? Yeah, Get it. So that's some very mic quick. on there. It is actually sizzling. Already rehydrated. Look at that. Oh, it's done. There you go, just like that. Cheers. Cheers. Post apocalyptic bacon. Canadian bacon. Mm. Good? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Good flavor. That literally no camera work was 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. Pretty darn quick. So let's go back to our, we got our pound cake. Wow. That actually looks pretty good. I can smell it too. I it mean, it smells great. Came right it back really to the original. It really smells great. That's amazing. Man. What was that? Seven, maybe eight Look minutes in there? Mmm. You should try that one. What do you say? Pretty good, hey? No, that's really good, man. I'm. Yeah, so it's not complicated. You, people tend to overthink no doubt. it. I'm actually shocked by how good that was. How worked. fast and how quick. Yeah, comes that's back. Incredible. <clears throat> now you see why we do six different pound cakes. Yeah, no, banana, I, marble, double chocolate. I would suggest can't get enough. Throw some pound cake into your. And if you immersed it in water because you didn't have access to a steamer, uh, let it stand for half a day. Wrap right. it in a dry paper towel, maybe, and uh, it'll shed that water and it'll go back to pretty close to that texture. You're not limited to just a steamer. You have hundreds of different varieties of this stuff. We've just barely scratched the surface. Oh, we just wanted while. to give people a, a breakdown of, you know, 
how to rehydrate different things because it can be challenging. I know it's a industry secret how you do a lot of your stuff, but can you maybe just tell people how is it that there's no oxygen in here? That food, when it comes out of the freeze dryer is in sort of a state of suspended animation. And, and over time, especially if there's humidity in the air uh, left out to stand, will start to reabsorb that water in the form of humidity. People use oxygen absorbers, desiccants, those will absorb excess oxygen in the bag and excess moisture. Um, there's other ways that are a little bit more advanced like nitrogen flushing. Nitrogen is heavier than oxygen, air, and the, the way you get sort of a vacuum on that, uh, there's 21% oxygen in our atmosphere. If you, re if you remove the oxygen over time, you'll get that sort of uh, vacuum appearance. So there, there's several ways to do it, but the end result is you want zero oxygen and zero moisture, and then that, that will last indefinitely. This is sort of going above and beyond. Yeah, you don't so. really have to worry about rotating food with this kind of a shelf life. It's yeah. not first in, first out. Mm -hmm. throw, it in, uh, throw it in something to protect it from light, heat, and it'll be there if you need it. It keeps all those nutrients. It does. Calories, nutrients, no loss whatsoever. There's, there's a lot of things you can do when you're getting a food in its dry form. Like just even thinking about this pizza, like you might be able to grind that up, make some kind of paste and then toast it or like you might, you know, mm. I, you, there's just <laughs> different things you could Pizza paste. I try it. Uh, you're just being nice. I'm kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all alone here, folks. Anyways, man, thanks for coming out. Thanks I appreciate it. Me. Great appreciate to have it. you here as always. Appreciate Look forward it. to doing it again. Guys, if you want to get 15% off wholesale freeze dry, go check out the link in the description below and build up your post collapse pantry. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.